Hello, hello! So today we're going to be taking a quick look at the flight directive feature in the cockpit and what it's used for. In this video we'll be talking a lot about the attitude indicator, so if you're not familiar with what it is and what it does, I'd recommend quickly checking out my tutorial on cockpit instruments linked in the top right corner and the description below. So a flight director is an instrument which is overlaid on the attitude indicator in the cockpit, which advises a pilot to fly a certain trajectory or a certain direction. Attitude indicators which have a flight direction feature are sometimes referred to as the attitude director indicator or an ADI for short. The flight director is typically used along with the autopilot, however a plane can be flown manually with the flight director enabled. Normally, a flight director will guide the pilot based on values which are entered in the autopilot panel or it may use information from a pre-planned route. So the easiest way for me to explain this is by demonstrating how it works. But first, let's look at a couple of types of flight director that you may see. So these are the two most common versions of the flight director in FSX. The first one is an upside down V shape and is typically used on attitude indicators where the plane is represented as a triangle shape. The other is a crosshair style where you have a vertical and horizontal line. This is typically found on larger jet aircraft. Normally the flight director indicator is either yellow or magenta in colour. So to demonstrate how this works I'm going to animate both versions and give a brief explanation of what's happening and then include some in-game footage of the flight director afterwards. So if a plane needs to climb, you'll notice that there is an upward movement on both flight directors. This is basically indicating to the pilot, pitch the plane upwards to climb. You'll notice on the right side that the horizontal bar represents the pitch. Opposite to that, if the plane needs to descend or lose altitude, there is a downward movement from the flight directors, telling the pilot to pitch the nose of the plane down. Now, if a plane needs to turn left, you'll notice that the two flight directors work slightly differently. The upside down V version will actually roll or tilt towards the left. However, on the command bar version, you'll see that the vertical bar moves to the left, but it doesn't tilt. Now if a plane needs to turn to the right, you'll see that the flight director will either roll or slide to the right. So your job as the pilot is to either pitch or turn the plane as directed. Basically, you want to keep your artificial plane in the attitude indicator as close to the flight director as possible. So in the upside down V version, you're aiming to fit the triangular shape of your aircraft into that V shape kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. If you're using the command bar version, you'll likely have a dot which represents the nose of the plane, so you're aiming to put that dot on the point where the lines cross. Allow me to do a quick demonstration. Okay, and here we are in a Mooney Bravo, so I just want to do a quick practical demonstration of how the flight director works while flying. So, in the Mooney Bravo, you can actually enable and disable the flight director over here on the left hand side. You have two sort of master switches. One is for the autopilot master, and then the second one here is for the flight director. So, if I click on that now, you can see that we get that yellow V shaped uh, sort of flight director there. It's slightly different to the one I had in my animation previously, but it's, the, uh, it's that upside down V. You can definitely tell there. Now, if you remember earlier on in the video, I said that the flight director can normally take values from the autopilot panel. So what I'm going to do is just bring up the radio stack now, so you can see that there. Now, what we will do is if we set in an altitude of 5,000 feet, oops. Now, if you have a look at the flight director, nothing changed there. You would expect, if we wanted to climb up to 5,000 feet, you would expect the flight director to move upwards to tell the pilot to pitch the plane up. Is there a problem there? Let's turn it off, turn it back on. No, it's still not working. Why is that? Well, what you need to do is you need to actually enable altitude hold on the autopilot panel. Even though you don't have the autopilot master switched on, you still need to enable the altitude hold switch. Now, if you have a uh, sorry, keep a close eye 
on the flight director just now as I turn this on. Now you can see, hopefully you saw that in the video, it moved up very slightly. There's another example that I can give just now. Uh, let's say that we wanted to turn around to a heading of 090 degrees. So move that there. Again, we don't get any movement on the flight director. What you need to do is you need to enable heading hold. So if you keep a close eye on the flight director just now while I enable heading hold, and you see that it rolls round to the right. Now there's one thing, there's a, a movement that you need to be aware of as you're following the flight director. I'll show this to you in, the, in a minute, but when you're up, up in the air and you make that turn to the right, what will happen is as you get closer to the heading that you've selected, the flight director will actually roll back to center, to back to wings level, to bring you onto that heading. So I can kind of simulate that on the ground just now. So if I bring the heading bug back towards our current heading, watch the flight director. And you'll see that it will start to roll the wings level. Now it will do that same movement when you're flying and when you're actually turning the plane. So you need to be aware of the flight director moving as you're in the middle of a turn. So what I'm going to do just now is I'm going to take off and try and demonstrate that uh, while I'm flying just now. So we've got the heading set to 090. All right, and we'll take off just now. Probably going to be a bit of a fast takeoff. I don't have any flaps set or the plane trimmed properly. So we'll pull back now. Just get the nose up. Oops. There we go. Now I'm going to just trim the plane. So if you hear any clicking in the background, that's me just uh, trimming the plane using the buttons on my joystick. Try and get it set there. Okay, that's just about right. Okay, so if you have a look at the flight director, it's still telling us to turn to the right. And you can see that if I, I can bank to the left, bank to the right, I'm still in control of the plane at the moment. So, if we want to follow the flight director, as I said earlier, what we want to do is kind of fit our artificial plane, our, that orange triangle shape, into the flight director. So I'm going to roll around to the right just now and try and f line those up and fit that in there. Now because it's quite a short turn you can see that I have to bank to the left now to keep the flight, to keep the artificial plane within the flight director. Okay, and there you go. If you have a look at the heading indicator now you can see that we are bang on 090 degrees and this is me still in control of the plane you know I can still turn if I turn in this direction for about 30 degrees and roll out you can see that the flight director is now telling me to turn to the left if I want to go back onto that heading of 090 degrees so just having to trim the plane again there so if I roll around to the left, the closer we get to our heading that we want, we just have to roll out, just keep the uh, artificial plane lined up with the uh, flight director there. And then that will bring us onto the heading that we've set into our autopilot panel. But remember that the autopilot is not actually enabled. So you can test the autopilot just now. What I'm going to do is just going to turn away from the heading. There we go. So you can see that the flight director, as expected, is telling us to turn left. So if I go and enable the autopilot now. I've got my hands off the control. Let me show you that. So you can see that's me trying to throw the plane off and it's turning to the left and you'll see that it pretty much does the same movements the flight director will move but the plane will, because the autopilot is now in control the plane will automatically turn in that direction 
And if we move the heading now to the right, you can see that the plane, the autopilot, is doing its best to keep the plane in line with the flight director. So that was a quick demonstration of the flight director in the small plane. Let's have a look at the flight director in a larger aircraft now. Okay, and here we are in the default Boeing 737 in FSX. So you can see the cockpit obviously looks a lot different to a small aircraft, but if you have a look at the autopilot panel here in the cockpit, our flight director switch is just here. So if we click that on and have a look at the primary flight display, you should just about be able to see two pink or magenta lines in the crosshair style of the flight director there. And we've also got FD at the top indicating that the flight director has been enabled. So if we want to test this while we're on the ground, we can dial the altitude up to, let's say, let's say 4,000 feet. I've gone way beyond it there. And then again, we have to actually enable the altitude hold for it to take effect on the flight director. So keep an eye on the flight director down here as I enable this. And you can see that we have the horizontal line moves up there, telling us that we need to pitch upwards or pull the nose up into the sky for the plane to climb. Now, unfortunately, I've noticed this issue with a lot of the jet aircraft in FSX. Uh, certainly the Boeing 737, the 747 and the Airbus. If we change the heading and then enable the heading select, the vertical bar does not move. So it doesn't look like that that is going to work properly for the default aircraft. Let me just try taking off just now just to see if it works, but I doubt very much that it will work. I think, unfortunately, I think the uh, flight director modeling doesn't quite work for the larger aircraft in FSX. So you can see the vertical, or sorry, the horizontal line seems to be working okay. Although it seems to be encouraging me to pull into a stall. <laughs> That's what the little rattling sound was just now. But you can see the vertical line there, which should be telling me to turn to the right, is not doing so. I should pull the uh, throttles back a little bit. Gosh, this default aircraft handles quite... Uh, interestingly, shall we say. Now, if we go and enable the autopilot master switch, <coughs> you'll see that the aircraft will turn to the right there. But you should be seeing a larger deflection of the vertical bar if you're not following the heading there. Which is a bit of a shame, but uh, yeah, that's about it for the flight directors in FSX. Um, if anyone's interested, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, include some footage at the end of this video of me flying an add-on jet aircraft so you can see how the flight director works in uh, an aircraft which has had a bit more time, uh, the developers have spent a bit more time modelling it. But for this video, uh, I'm going to call it there. So thank you all very much for watching, take care out there, and I will catch you all later. Okay, and here we are in an Airbus A319 made by Aerosoft. So, um, unfortunately at the moment there's no flight director being displayed on the primary flight display, but that should uh, sort of start showing once the uh, once we take off. So the reason I'm doing this, uh, this kind of takeoff in this aircraft is because we've got quite an interesting departure here. And it also gives me an opportunity to show you how the flight director uses pre-programmed information such as this flight plan here. So basically we're going to take off, climb a little bit and then turn left, then turn right and then turn right again. And then these uh, magenta circles and that basically just tell us we've got altitude restrictions. So we're going to have to fly straight and level for a little bit during this departure as well. So I think the plane is pretty much set up and ready to go. So um, I'm going to take off now and it might be a bit hectic for me because I'll need to like flick switches and do the landing gear and all sorts. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to like just limit my view to sort of this here. 
so you can see where we're going and you can see the flight director bars moving uh, as they should there, there we go, so we've got a heads on view, so you can see we're turning left, turning right and then turning right again so uh, let's give it to the brakes and take off please excuse my scenery here as well <laughs> I think in this Airbus, the uh, flight director bars are actually a green colour. Yeah, so we're past V1 already. There's V2, we'll rotate. You can see we've got the horizontal bar there, and now we've got the vertical bar. So, and the gear can come up. I should tell you what, I'm not going to worry about switching lights and stuff. So I'm just going to limit my view to this here. So I am purely flying by the flight director there. So you can see he's telling me to turn to the left now. So I'm going to roll the plane over to the left. You can see he's telling me to put the nose down and point it to the left. So I'm just going to start doing that just now, gently. Just roll the plane over a bit more until we get that vertical line centred. And we should see that vertical line moving to the right. lift the nose up a little bit there. If you have a look at the display on the right hand side you can see the flight path that we're taking. You can see that we're following that. Just start bringing the flaps up there so I don't risk the, uh, the speed at all. You can see that as I take the flaps away the uh, horizontal bar moves. Now it's telling us to turn to the right so roll it over. I'm flying this all completely manually. So roll it over a bit more, <coughs> lift the nose up slightly, not sure what that was but uh, I'll not worry about it because it's not continuing. So you can see that we're coming up on, I think that was an altitude warning, just warning us that we're getting a bit close to one of the altitude constraints, so you can see we've got 5000 there on the altitude tape. So I need to turn back to the left slightly. Oops, losing it. The only thing that the uh, plane is automatically controlling at the moment is the throttles. So you might hear that moving a bit as I uh, as I fly. So just turn to the right. Just get that vertical line centered. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. So if you're new to flying with a flight director, you might find that you're chasing it quite a bit to begin with. But it's not to worry. So that is absolutely perfect. That's exactly the attitude that we want to be following our flight plan. When the vertical bar moves to the right, I just roll the plane over to the right a tiny bit more. And that is flying exactly as I want it. If you have a look at the display on the right hand side, you can see that we're flying our flight path as we need to. Lift the nose up ever so slightly there. And then just as we hit this next waypoint on the flight plan, we're going to climb up a little bit, so we might see the uh, vertical bar move up. Yep, there it goes. So we're just going to be climbing up to 6,000 feet now. Again, I think that was just an altitude warning, just letting us know that we're coming up to the altitude. There we go. 
and I think I will just about leave it there. So there you go, that's a, a sort of a, a practical demonstration of the flight director in a, uh, a larger aircraft such as a jet aircraft. So I hope you enjoyed it and uh, yeah, as before, thank you very much for watching. Take care out there and I'll catch you all later.